Hello and welcome to our lecture about the 17th century poetry presented by Dr. Ala Al Halbousi. This lecture is presented as part of the second course to the second year students of the English Department of the College of Arts, Al Iraqiya University. To Daffodils by Robert Herrick. Fair daffodils, we weep to see you haste away so soon. As yet the early rising sun has not attained his noon. Stay, stay, until the hasting day has run. But to the even song, and having prayed together, we will go with you along. We have a short time to stay, as you we have a short a spring. As quick a growth to meet decay, as you or anything. We die as you ours do and dry away, like to the summer's rain, or as the pears of morning do, near to be found again. The main idea of the poem is illustrated in that humankind is likened to the daffodils in the shortness of its lifespan, with growth followed immediately by decline and eventual death. Of course, Herrick is speaking in relative terms, but his readers would be familiar with the concept of a human life being compared with that of plant life as far as its temporary nature is concerned. The idea of the idea of the idea is the idea of the idea of the idea of the daffodils and the idea of the birds with the idea of the birds. How do you think that this plant is going to be released in a very simple way and then it will be released in a very simple way? Where the idea of 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 the idea. So let's start with the analysis of the first stanza. In the case of the poem and the discussion, for rose buds read daffodils, the first of the two stanzas read, Fair daffodils, we weep to see, you haste away so soon, as yet the early rising sun has not attained his noon. Stay, stay, till the hasting day has run, but to the evening song, and having prayed together, we will go with you along. The poet has presumably noticed that the spring daffodils possibly growing in his churchyard are starting to die off and he wishes that they would at least stay blooming for the hours of daylight. He then associates them with evensong and prayer expressing the hope that the congregation will be able to see the flowers still in bloom as they leave church. الشاعر هنا يطلب من النرجس البري أن لا يذبل بسرعة وأن ينتظر إلى أن تكتمل صلاة المصلين في الكنيسة على أقل تقدير حيث أن المصلين يرغبون برؤية هذه الزهور الجميلة عند مغادرتهم There is an interesting hint worthy of a metaphysical poet that the daffodils, as they drop, are engaged in prayer alongside the worshippers This depends on the ambiguity of prayer together, which could be taken as meaning just the church, congregation, or including the daffodils as well. هناك تساؤل ينطرح هنا هل كان الشاعر يقارن زهور النرجس البرية مع المصلين حيث أنهم يزهرون وقت الصلاة ولكن عند مغادرتهم فإنهم يذبلون ويموتون. The second stanza reads. We have short time to stay as you. We have as short a spring, as quick a growth to meet decay as you or anything. We die as your hours do and dry away, like to the summer's rain, or as the pearls of mornings do, near to be found again. Herrick merely points to the comparison without laboring the point. He has already alluded to the best non-sermon ever preached and does not need to offer one of his own. المقارنة وموضوع المقارنة كان حاضرا لدى الشاعر دام أنه قد قارن الزهور ممكن أن يقارن موسم الربيع الذي أحاط بهذه الزهور. Indeed, it is surprising that Herrick does not make any reference to an afterlife for either daffodils or men. There is nothing here about hopes to bloom again next year or of heavenly rewarded for the writers. 
As far as man is concerned, he is just like summer rain or mornings do, in that he is near, in that he is near to be found again. In other words, apart from the references to prayer in the first stanza, this is a poem that could have been written as easily by an atheist as by a country person. عندما قارن الشاعر حياة الزهور مع المصلين في الكنيسة لم يذكر الحياة الأزلية أو ما بعد الموت حيث أن هذه النباتات سوف تزهر مرة ثانية العام المقبل ولكنه لم يتكلم عن هذا الأمر لم يضع أملا في هذا الأمر ولم يضع أملا المصلين حيث أنه خاطبهم كأنه مرود النرجس التي لن تزهر بعد الآن وهذا مخالف لما قد يعتقده الإنسان المؤمن حيث أن هناك حياة بعد الموت وهناك جنة بانتظار من يؤمن بالله وجهة النظر هذه قد تكون أقرب إلى الشخص الذي لا يؤمن بوجود الخالق عن أنها تكون وجهة نظر شخص متدين وهنا نأتي إلى مصطلح ذات أصول لاتينية والذي هو كابديم بمعنى سيز ذا داي انتهاز الفرصة دام أنك تعيش في هذه الحياة استغل كل فرصة متاحة لك دون هدرها بالحزن والتعاسة As mentioned previously, this is a Carpe Diem Seize the Day poem that points to the inevitability of decay and death, but with no hint of any obligation to earn a place in the afterlife by living a godly existence now. In Two Daffodils, it is simply a straightforward presentation of the facts, leaving readers to draw their own conclusion. This poem has several themes. The first one is the short-lived nature of life, the fleeting passage of time. عن طبيعة قصر الحياة التي نعيشها وكيف أنها تنتهي بسرعة. الموضوع الثاني هو Like the flowers, we human have a very short life in this world. هو مقارنة حياتنا القصيرة مع الحياة القصيرة للزهور وكيف أن كلاهما ينتهي بسرعة. بينما الموضوع الثالث هو Beauty is not going to stay forever الجمال سوف لن يستمر للأبد لا بد لهذا الجمال أن يضمحل وأن يذهب وتبقى آثاره فقط ويموت هنا في كل هذه المواضيع الثلاثة يتكلم الشاعر ويركز على أن الحياة قصيرة ويجب استغلالها بشكل صحيح وفي الختام كما تعودنا أن نذكر الأدوات الأدبية المستخدمة في القصيدة The literary devices The poet used some metaphors as the early rising sun which he uses to describe the exceedingly quick lifespan of daffodils He also uses many imaginaries to describe the short time we every mortal being have The imagery of spring, summer's rain Pairs of mornings do refer to either human or flowers life which is beautiful yet only lasts in short yet only lasts in a short time. The poet uses contrast in the word dry and decay which has a negative connotation. Dry as we grow old, vulnerable, incapable of doing things once the spring youth is gone. Decay which indicates death, inability, uselessness and end. Those imageries and connotations are very well used by the poets in order to express his intentions. استخدم الشاعر عدة أساليب للمقارنة عندما قال early rising sun والشروق شروق الشمس والذي شبهه بسرعة بداية وانتهاء حياة الأزهار والبشر وقارن أيضا باستخدام فصل الربيع ومطر الصيف وقطرات الندى كلها للإشارة إلى حياة أو قصر حياة الإنسان والزهور أو الأشياء الجميلة وأيضا استخدم الشاعر التناقض The contrast When he said dry and decay مقارنة ب life and summer and spring والتي تشير إلى ارتباطات سلبية dry as we grow old الذي تمثل الضعف وعدم القدرة على فعل الأشياء وقارن فصل الربيع بشباب البشر الذي ممكن أن ينتهي بسرعة 
بأن فصل الربيع وفصل الصيف في بريطانيا هما فصلين قصيرين جدا. Um, this is the end of our lecture for today, and I hope to see you in the next one.